hello everyone today we will discuss about transport of oxygen gases are transported along the direction of the concentration gradient as you can see in the alveoli alveolar partial pressure of oxygen is 104 mm of mercury you can see here in the alveoli arterial blood partial pressure that is 95 mm of mercury due to some amount of venous admixture venous blood partial pressure of oxygen is 40 mm of mercury and interstitial fluid partial pressure of oxygen is 40 mm of mercury therefore oxygen is transported from alveolar air into the pulmonary capillary blood and this arterial blood is transported to the tissue and along the gradient this oxygen is transported inside the cell now you can see in this diagram also same things is depicted here you can see partial pressure difference of oxygen as we have discussed alveolar partial pressure then pulmonary capillary then intracellular and venous pressure now this transport of oxygen it can be described under three headings first that is uptake of oxygen in the lungs by the pulmonary blood second this oxygen is transported in the arterial blood and third that is diffusion of oxygen from blood to the interstitial tissue fluid you can see here the same thing now uptake of oxygen by pulmonary blood as we have discussed alveolar partial pressure of oxygen is 104 mm of mercury and pulmonary arterial blood partial pressure of oxygen that is 40 mm mg as it is arterial blood but contains deoxygenated blood for the partial pressure of oxygen is 40 mm of mercury and this oxygen is transported across this alveolar capillary membrane till the state of equilibrium is achieved you can see here at the venous end partial pressure of oxygen becomes 104 mm of mercury now during strenuous exercise oxygen requirement increases about 20 times than normal here cardiac output increases therefore blood remains for a short period of time in the pulmonary circuit still the blood is saturated with oxygen now what are the reasons for saturation first that is diffusion capacity for the oxygen increases and saturation of blood with the oxygen also increases you can see here diffusion capacity increases because opening of more and more blood vessels and saturation of blood with the oxygen also increases now transport of oxygen in the arterial blood oxygen is transported in mainly two forms one that is dissolved form that is only 3% and second that is oxyhemoglobin form that is in combination with hemoglobin which is 97% you can see here now first form that is transport in dissolved form oxygen in the arterial blood is 19 ml per 100 ml of blood as oxygen in the venous blood is 14 ml per 100 ml of blood so you can say the difference 5 ml is transported so 5 ml of oxygen is transported per 100 ml of blood which 3% of oxygen is transported in dissolved form now dissolved form of oxygen obeys henry's law now what is henry's law that is amount of dissolved form of any gas it is proportional to its partial pressure so you can see here as the partial pressure increases amount of dissolved form also increases and there is no limit to the amount oxygen can be carried in the dissolved form and this dissolved oxygen can be supplied to the tissue in cases of poisoning like carbon monoxide poisoning you can see here as in case of any gas when we are increasing pressure amount of dissolved form of the gas increases now second form that is transport in combination with hemoglobin 97% of oxygen is transported in combination with the hemoglobin this is known as oxygenation this is not oxidation why it is known as oxygenation because this transport is loosely bound rapid transport and it is reversible combination so loose 
Rapid means it is within 0 0.01 second oxygen binds with the hemoglobin and it is reversible. Therefore, it is known as oxygenation. Okay. Now, driving force for the reaction that is oxygen tension. When one molecule of oxygen binds with the iron that is present in the hemoglobin, this increases affinity of the hemoglobin for binding with the second oxygen molecule. And when second binds, it increases affinity for the third and third increases affinity for the fourth one. What is the reason? Because when oxygen binds with the hemoglobin, the structure of hemoglobin changes. You can see here, the quaternary structure of hemoglobin, it changes from tense state to the relaxed state. You can see here, this hemoglobin is getting changed. So the reaction becomes fast. So first molecule binding is little bit slow, second is fast, third is faster than second and fourth one is faster than third one. And this is known as heme-heme reaction. Now, oxygen carrying capacity of the hemoglobin. What is it? 1 gram of hemoglobin combines with 1.34 ml of oxygen. So our hemoglobin concentration in blood is in males it is 14 to 18 grams per deciliter and in females it is 12 to 15 grams per deciliter hemoglobin. So suppose if we take it as 15 grams, so 1 gram hemoglobin binds with 1.34 ml of oxygen. Therefore 15 gram of hemoglobin binds with 20.1 ml of oxygen. So our oxygen carrying capacity of blood is 20.1 ml per 100 ml of blood because 15 gram of hemoglobin is present in 100 ml of blood. Now this 20.1 ml of oxygen is normal oxygen carrying capacity but it is not reached because some amount of venous blood gets mixed with it that is due to physiological shunt. So physiological shunt or you can say venous admixture bronchial blood which is deoxygenated which gets mixed with the pulmonary veins which is having oxygenated blood. And because of this venous admixture, oxygen carrying capacity, instead of 20.1 ml, it becomes 19.5 ml per 100 ml of blood. Now, hemoglobin saturation. What is it? It is the percentage of hemoglobin binds with oxygen. Let us explain. When oxygen is bound with all four sides of hemoglobin, that is known as 100% saturation. Suppose if only three sides are bound then that is 75 percent saturation so percentage saturation can be calculated by oxygen content of blood divided by oxygen carrying capacity multiplied by 100 now how this has come let us explain suppose oxygen carrying capacity as we have discussed how much is oxygen carrying capacity that is 19.5 ml so 19.5 ml is 100 percent now we get the oxygen content suppose my blood oxygen content is only 15 ml so 15 ml is how much percentage saturation 19 is 100 15 is how much so we get the hemoglobin saturation or percentage of hemoglobin that binds with oxygen here in the first diagram you can see around 99 percent saturation is there whereas in the second one 75 percent saturation you can see three oxygen molecules are present with each hemoglobin okay now now very important part that is oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve now what is it it is the relationship between two components one that is percentage hemoglobin saturation and second that is partial pressure of oxygen you can see here on the x-axis we have po2 and on the y-axis we have percentage saturation of hemoglobin Cough is S shaped or sigmoid shaped you can see here okay now values try to remember whenever you are drawing the curve how to draw it here first you write down PO2 on the x axis and percentage saturation on the y axis you can see then write down 10 20 200 here also 10 20 200 now values to remember when partial pressure of oxygen is 20 mmHg at 20, try to remember some values only, 20. At 20, percentage saturation is 35. So, you just make a dot here, 20 mmHg, 35 percentage here. Then, at 40 mmHg, percentage saturation is 75, second dot here, here exactly, okay. Then, 60 mmHg, 
percentage saturation is 89 or 90 you can easily put dot here 90 at, at 80 mm Hg, percentage saturation is 95 so you can see 80 and here 95 then at 100 mm Hg, percentage saturation is 98 percent and you just have to join all these values and you will get the sigma shape. Now, this curve has two distinct zones. One that is loading zone which is also known as plateau part and second is unloading zone. You can see here, this one is loading zone and this is unloading zone. We will discuss. Now, loading zone which is flat or plateau part, this part that is related to the process of oxygen uptake here it is also known as margin of safety means when partial pressure of oxygen varies po2 from 60 to 100 here percentage saturation only falls slightly as 60 mm Hg, we have discussed how much is the percentage saturation at 60 mm Hg, percentage saturation is 90 and at 100 mm Hg percentage saturation is 99 point something or near to 100. So only this much fluctuations in percentage saturation takes place and therefore it is a margin of safety if there is any pulmonary disease or when we are climbing mountains and when our partial pressure of oxygen in the lungs decreases in spite of that our hemoglobin is saturated with oxygen. Second is unloading or it is known as dissociation zone this one so here what is the significance here it is a steep part you can see when partial pressure of oxygen is 60 mmhg percentage saturation is 90 when it becomes 40 percentage saturation 75 when it becomes 20 percentage saturation 35 so you can see between 20 to 60 there is sharp fall in percentage saturation what does it denote Whenever our partial pressure of oxygen, whether in the lungs or in the tissue, when it decreases less than 60, there is sudden fall in the percentage saturation of hemoglobin and that is to deliver this oxygen to the tissue. Again you can see here. Now, what are the advantages of sigmoid shape? Here because of sigmoid shape, greater uptake of oxygen is possible at lungs. You can see this plateau part is in the lung. So here there is uptake. Percentage saturation is more. Percentage saturation more means oxygen is taken. And tissue level, this oxygen is released. So you can see tissues are supplied with the oxygen. And hemoglobin acts as a buffer. So hemoglobin, what does it do? It takes oxygen from the lung and it releases oxygen at the tissue level and it maintains tissue partial pressure of oxygen at about 40 millimeter of mercury. This is again you can see this is oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve this is 98 percent saturated hemoglobin so when 98 percent oxygen is there in the hemoglobin means 98% of hemoglobin molecules are bound with the oxygen and only 2% is left and when you can see when 75% oxygen saturation means 75% of oxygen is in the bound form and remaining this 23% is given to the tissue so it denotes that oxygen is delivered to the tissue this is again the same thing here now shift of oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve that is whether it is shifted to right or left what do you mean by shift to the right here you can see this is middle one is the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve okay and this red one is shift to right this one hmm? now what does it mean you can see in the middle one at 20 mm Hg we have discussed percentage saturation is 35 here this one what happens in this lower one at po2 20 mm Hg, percentage saturation here becomes less than 35 here you can see so you can say at same partial pressure of oxygen percentage saturation decreases means what happens oxygen is given or you can say oxygen is released to the tissue so shift to right means there is release of oxygen to the tissue there are various factors they cause shift to right they are whenever oxygen concentration decreases or hypoxia is there then oxygen is delivered 
सेकेंड वैन पार्शल प्रेशर ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इंक्रीजेस और एच प्लस आयन कंसेंट्रेशन और टेम्परेचर इंक्रीजेस और टिश्यू ग्लाइकोलिसिस विच प्रोड्यूसिस टू थ्री डाई फॉस्फो ग्लिसरेट इन दोज कंडीशन ऑल्सो दर इज इंक्रीज इन द रिलीज ऑफ ऑक्सीजन द एंड दर इज शिफ्ट टू राइट दिस ऑल कंडीशन दे आर कॉमनली सीन ड्यूरिंग एक्सरसाइज अवर कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड कंसेंट्रेशन इंक्रीजेस टेम्परेचर इंक्रीजेस एच प्लस कंसेंट्रेशन इंक्रीजेस टू थ्री डाई फॉस्फो ग्लिसरेट इंक्रीजेस बिकॉज ऑफ मेटाबॉलिज्म सो ड्यूरिंग एक्सरसाइज और वेन द टिश्यू इज एक्टिव और therefore during exercise or when tissues are active then that is shift to right now what is bohr's effect bohr's effect is shift of oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve due to changes in partial pressure of carbon dioxide and h plus ion when carbon dioxide and h plus ion increases there is shift to right and when carbon dioxide concentration and h plus ion decreases there is shift to left now factors they cause shift to left as we have discussed when there is decrease in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide decrease in the temperature decrease in the h plus ion concentration or increase ph there is shift to left as well as for fetal hemoglobin also the curve is shifted to left now here it is advantageous because if there is shift to left then fetus can take more oxygen at lower partial pressure of oxygen what is the reason for shift to left for fetal hemoglobin because fetal hemoglobin has two gamma chains and this gamma chains they have less affinity for 2 3 diphosphoglycerate and therefore they have more affinity for oxygen to 20 mmhg in adult hemoglobin percentage saturation is 35% whereas in fetal hemoglobin percentage saturation is double 75% you can see here this is shift to left this is for maternal this is oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve for mother and this is for fetus fetus is shifted to left next is p50 what is p50 it is the partial pressure of oxygen at which hemoglobin is 50% saturated you can see here at which partial pressure hemoglobin is 50% saturated you can see here this is percentage saturation of hemoglobin this is 50% so normally at partial pressure of 25 to 27 mm of mercury our hemoglobin is 50% saturated thinking that other conditions are normal other conditions means temperature is 37 degree celsius partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 40 mm of mercury then this is normal value of p50 okay now hemoglobin affinity for the oxygen is inversely related to p50 means when the p50 decreases affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen increases or you can say there is shift to left you can see here this is p50 and this is reduced here when it is reduced here then it there is shift to left and when p50 increases then there is shift to right and when there is shift to right there is release of oxygen from hemoglobin so this is all about oxygen transport thank you